And what's on my mind today? Nancy Ward. Nancy Ward is a kind of a well-known historical figure that lived pretty close to here. Probably not much more than 15 miles from where I am right now. Nancy Ward was a uh, Cherokee Indian woman. She lived between the late 1700s and about 1829, just before everything fell apart for the Cherokees. <clears throat> Nancy Ward earned uh, the attention of her peers at a very young age. They say she was only about 18 or 19 years old when she went into battle with her husband, whose name was Kingfisher. The intent was for Nancy to serve in uh, just kind of a, uh, a help, help capacity, loading muskets and carrying gear, stuff like that. Things did not go as planned, and Nancy's husband was killed in battle, and things were going very badly for the Cherokees. Nancy happened to be in a position to see what was going on, to understand what was going on, and was smart enough to understand what needed to be done to solve the problem. And in that place that really separates the haves from the have-nots, she acted. And she rallied the Cherokees and led them to victory. How about that? Sometimes they call her the Warrior Princess. Her Cherokee name was One Who Goes About. Wow, that's a great name. I'd like to be called that. I guess the reason, uh, some of the reasons that I've gotten interested in Nancy Ward, I guess it all started when my wife brought home a, uh, an artist print of Nancy Ward. Maybe I'll post that up here somewhere. Let's see, first off, she lives pretty close to us. That's one thing. It's always great to hear a story about a brave, smart warrior woman. And I guess maybe the thing that really uh, has caught the attention of, uh, of my family is her name. My own special princess bride is named Nancy. And we really enjoyed having that picture hanging in our house. Well, Nancy's uh, bravery earned her um, some celebrity, and uh, they, have, they made her a member of the Cherokee Council. This whole area around here, by the way, used to be part of the Cherokee Nation. We're pretty much smack in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. She could have just sat quietly and enjoyed her celebrity on the Cherokee Council, but she didn't do that either. She became very influential. And uh, to tell another story, there was a point where uh, a white woman was basically convicted and uh, was going to be executed. Don't really know all the backstory, but uh, Nancy Ward stepped in. Uh, I don't even know if she. Uh, thought she was innocent or if she just thought it was a bad idea to execute a white woman um, but she stepped in her influence saved that woman's life uh, she nursed the woman back to health and kept her in her home and then in gratitude this white woman taught Nancy how to weave with a weaving loom Nancy uh, really immediately saw this as a uh, huge potential uh, for trading, uh, not only for herself, but for all of the Cherokee people, and then taught a bunch of other Cherokee people how to weave, and then uh, Cherokee weaving came to be uh, a known commodity. You can still buy stuff that's called Cherokee weaving, whether it's real Cherokee weaving or not. This became uh, like an economic uh, boon for the Cherokee people at the time.
Nancy became so respected by the Cherokee Nation that when the time came to negotiate with the white man who was coming in trying to take their lands, it was Nancy who was sent to negotiate uh, with the negotiators from Washington. And uh, they say that under Nancy Ward's negotiations, they never lost land. And I don't know if any of the others of them can say that. The, uh, the negotiators from Washington actually grew to, to respect Miss Nancy Ward also. So, just out tooling around, a ride by her gravesite, pretty often really. So I'm just riding on a beautiful day, thinking about a warrior princess, a teacher, an ambassador, a hero, Nancy Ward. If you'd like to learn more about Nancy Ward, visit your local library. <laughs>